So we've got 9 times quantity 3u minus 2 minus 4, ooh, big bracket here, 6 minus 8 times quantity u minus 1 equals 3 times quantity u minus 2. So what we want to do, I've got u's all over the place, both sides. So I'm just going to distribute from the inside to the out first. So let's just do this first. That would be negative 8 times u is negative 8u, negative 8 times negative 1. We want to remember the signs here, so that's going to be plus 8. And then here, on the right-hand side, it's much easier for you. So you want to just say 3 times u is 3u, and then 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then all the way to the left, on the left-hand side, you want to distribute the 9, and it's going to be 9 times 3u is 27u, and 9 times negative 2, and we want to make sure, remember the signs there, that'll be negative 18 or minus 18. We have a minus 4 here, that's just a spectator um, term right there, and then we saw that 6. So what we want to do is definitely collect like terms within this bracket, so everything else is just hang and chill for right now. And so we've got 6 plus 8, cool, I know that one, that's 14 minus 8u inside the brackets there, or grouping symbols if uh, it's a different generation. And then next, we're going to do the same thing. We're like, okay, let you distribute this negative 4. And remember, you want to keep that sign going too. So it's negative 4 um, times 14. That would be negative 56. And then negative 4 times negative 8u would be plus 32u. Everything else is just static for the moment, or, or a spectator term or expression. And what we want to do next, you'll probably want to collect like terms. So let's do the u's first on the left-hand side. So we have 27u plus 32u. I'm going to go with that's 59u. And then you have negative 18 minus 56. So you're negative and you're even going more negative. So it's almost like we know it's going to be a minus right there. And then we could just add, actually, um, 56 plus 18. 6 plus 8 is 14, carrier 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this will be minus 74 equals 3u minus 6. Ooh, I moved the equal sign over. I hope I didn't get points off. I would in my algebra class um, back in the day. So, uh, ooh, bad memories. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Sorry, I'm, I'm doing it without annotating it or, uh, or doing the play-by-play. -play. What we're going to do is find out which side has more of the variable. It's the left side because 59u is greater than 3u. And then so what I'm going to do is move all the variables, like variable is going to be the left side, and then the number uh, or pound sign is the right, or constants, that's that's the math term for it. What we're going to do is also get rid of this 74 or minus 74 simultaneously. So I'm going to add 74 to both sides. So I'm kind of doing two steps in one, which is totally kosher here. Um, that's going to cancel. That's going to cancel. Yay. Um, 74, like negative 6 plus 74. I don't like that, but I could do 74 minus 6. And that's 68. It's like, okay, cool. I can manage that. And then 59u minus 3u is going to be 56u. Then you'll see we don't want 56u. We just want u. So we're going to divide both sides by 56. And I get u equals 68 over 56. I'm pretty sure everything here is divisible by 2, probably even by 4. Uh, let's see. So if we do 2, that would be... 34 over 28, 2 again, that would be 17 over 14. I think that would suffice. If your teacher says, uh, if your teacher or instructor doesn't like improper fractions, you can use mixed numbers. Mixed numbers would be uh, 1 and 3 fourteenths. Either answer, but I, I do like this one that I'm putting the asterisk by because later on in math, we don't like mixed numbers. We do like improper fractions. I don't want to argue with um, people on this in algebra. It's more like pre-calculus and calculus. Those people, they understand. Okay, so we go on uh, 651 here. Solve the formula x minus 2 equals 5 for, oh, the a part is x equals 3. So we're going to do substitute. Every time we see an x, we're going to substitute negative 3. So instead of saying x minus 2 equals 5, we're going to do negative 3 minus 2y equals 5. Basically, we've subbed in the x, negative 3, for that a part. Okay, and then we can drop the parentheses because really nothing's going on there. So it's negative 3 minus 2y equals 5. And then, okay, let us have variables on the right because negative 2y is actually less than 0y. I know that sounds a little trippy. 
What we want to do is then add 2y to both sides, and we do it here. And then we could subtract 5 simultaneously. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the variables on the left and then the constants on the right. So 0y plus 2y is going to be 2y remaining on the right-hand side. Negative 3 minus 5 on the left-hand side would be negative 8. And then we're like that grouchy person, I don't want 2y, I want 1y. So you divide both sides by 2, that coefficient of 2y, because they're going to cancel. So you'll just have y remaining on the right-hand side. And then you can divide negative 8 divided by 2. That would be negative 4. So that's the answer for A. Um, in general, oh my gosh, okay, that's kind of a different question altogether for, for part B. So part B, we're just basically going to try to get Y to one side, and, and we're going to get the answer in terms of X. So what's going to happen is let's put Y on the right-hand side. I think, I think everyone's cool with that because we kind of just did the same thing on the A part to the right here. And I want to sub subtract, you probably want to subtract 5 too from both sides. So you'll see this 5 minus 5 cancels. So on the right hand side, you'll have 2y remaining. And then minus 2y and plus 2y, those cancel. So you just have x minus 5 remaining on the left hand side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you don't want 2y, you just want to solve for y. So you divide by that coefficient. And then you have x minus 5 over 2 equals y. And that's a general solution for y. It's going to be x minus 5, that all over 2. Cool. I think you probably understand. If you don't, uh, comment. If, if, if you dislike, comment too. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm open to uh, legitimate criticism. Okay, so in the following exercises, graph on the number line and write an interval notation. So in a number line, um, just so you remember, we're going to have negatives or, or subtraction is going to the left and addition or positive is going to the right. I didn't make the rules, I'm just kind of showing you what's going on. So if we had, for instance, a negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, yada, 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 that's how a number line in the negative region would look like. And we'd have it greater than or equal to negative 3.5. So negative 3.5 is halfway between negative three and negative four. So we're gonna make a big thick dot not an open dot, but a thick dot, or people might call it a closed dot. And it's saying, oh, greater than, so greater than is going to the right. So we're going to just go and go all thick, like ha, ha, ha. Our orange is our answer. Man, if you're colorblind and don't know orange from red, I'm so sorry. I'll also put a little bit of a, a different color there just to, to, to make it pop. Um, I have, I think, slight color blindness, so, so I feel you. Okay, um, in this case, x is less than 11 fourths. I don't know what 11 fourths is, so I'm going to treat this uh, fraction as an unfinished division problem. So 4 into 11 goes 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. Draw the line, change the sign. I get this. And as long as I put this big, fat, thick decimal point there, everybody's cool. Um, 4 into 30 goes 7 times, because 7 times 4 is 28. Draw the line, change the sign. We have 2 there. And then we're going to drop that other 0. So 4 into 20 goes 5 times. So it's, it's basically it's 2.75. It's really, I can rewrite as x is less than 2.75. Now, on a number line, right, this is negative um, going in this direction, or minus, or less than going there. Um, this is on the right hand side, it's positive going this way or greater than. So we're somewhere between two and three. So let's put uh, two here, let's put three here, four here, just just to you know appease your teacher. So what's going to happen? It's less than 2.75. So we're actually not going to include the, the 2.75 part. It's basically less than 2.75. So we're going the arrow is going to be to the left, and we put an open dot there right at 2.75 because we're not including it. We're, we're including 2.74999999 or you know 2.73, all those, but not 2.75. That's what that means. Um, and we could just write 11 fourths just to show the teacher that we understand what's going on. Okay, we continue. Um, we're going to. Solve each inequality, graph the solution number line, 
write the solution in, I think it probably said interval notation. So we, we got a few things to do right now. First thing is, in an equality or inequality, which side has more of a variable? I'm going to go with the left side, so I'm going to subtract 3k from both sides. First step. So 8k minus 3k is 5k. Why am I subtracting 3k? That is a mistake on my part. Actually, erasing everything is also a mistake. It's like I'm covering up my mistake. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm a politician or some criminal. Okay, um, I'm going to lock this so we can't do that again. Sorry. Um, I'm going to subtract 5k from both sides. Oh, that was so boneheaded. I'm going to get flamed in the comments. I deserve it. I understand that. Um, I'm getting rid of the k stuff on the right. So we get this greater than or equal to negative 120. You want to divide by 3 the coefficient of k. So you'll be left with k is greater than or equal to 40. So this is the solution of the inequality. Um, graph it on a number line. So I'll, you know, I'll just write a number line right here. So let's say uh, 40 is here. We could put 50 here and 30 here. It's good, just, you know, good karma just to write some numbers to the left and to the right. Greater than or equal to. So what that means is we're going to include it. We're going to include that actual number 40. And remember, going greater than is going to be to the right. So greater than or equal to. And th this little line underneath that inequality, that means thick dot on that. See, 655, no line underneath, so it's going to be an open dot, just so you know, let you know the secrets here. Um, I'm going to rewrite this because I think when I don't rewrite it, I tend to mess up. So I got 3c minus 10 times the quantity, c minus 2, is less than 5c plus 16. So what you want to do is distribute this negative 10 because we have to find out which side has more c, and there's going to be all kinds of stuff going on here. Negative 10 times negative 2 is positive 20 is less than 5c plus 16. Now we can collect like terms because 3c minus 10c, they're both c terms. And then think about the absolute value. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Which one has a greater absolute value? The negative 10c. So I know my answer will be negative, and then I just do simple subtraction, 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, so it's minus 7c, or negative 7c plus 20 is less than 5c plus 16. For those of you who realized I overlooked the interval notation for the last answer, I'm going to do it in just a moment. But sticking with this problem, I'm finding out the right-hand side, 5c is greater than negative 7c, so I'm going to add 7c to get to make my right side the variable side, and then I'm going to subtract 16 because the left side is going to be the number side or constant side. So what we have here is 5c plus 7c is 12c. These cancel. 20 minus 16 is 4. And then you probably know, hey, you want to divide both sides by 12. So we have 4 over 12 simplifies to 1 over 3 is less than c. You could rewrite this as c is greater than 1 third. I think that might be a little bit easier. So if Okay, so that is actually the solution. If I do number line, um, if I put, say, 0 here and 1 here, it's one-third the way between those two numbers. So it's going to be about here-ish. And it's a less, it's, uh, sorry, it actually comes out to be a greater than. So we're still going to go to the right, but it's an open dot. Why is it an open dot? Because it's a greater than symbol. This symbol means you go to the right and not include the actual number. Um, interval notation, okay, since it doesn't include one-third, um, I'm going to write this in, like, I think a lavender or uh, purple. It's going to be one-third, because we don't include it, and be one-third comma infinity, mean it's going to go to the right forever. So this is kind of part A, the solution. Part B is, oh, that's not part B. Um, part B is number line. Part C is interval notation. I didn't do part C for uh, 654 here. So what I'm going to do is it is including 40. So I'm going to put this kind of grouping symbol, a bracket, and then do comma infinity. And since we don't, and I don't want to get into like a medieval discussion about this, but infinity, because we can't actually include it, it's always bounded by parentheses, open or close parentheses. Okay, 
You continue. We continue. Ooh, translate to an equation or inequality and solve. I think I'm up for the challenge. 4 less than twice x is 16. So th this might seem a little funky, but I'm, I'm going to hone in on the, or home in on the x part. Twice x, 4 less than that. Ha, ha, ha. So this means 4 less than twice x. Like this, I'll underline in red, is 16. Oh, is? Oh, pff, is 16. That means equals 16. I can do that. Okay, great. Now I've trans we've translated here. I will box that as like, okay, that's the translation. Solving, probably already know the drill. We we work from the outside in using the bullseye method and just game of opposites. So instead of subtracting four, we're gonna add four to both sides. We do that. Oops, I'm adding 14. I'm getting hyperinflation. Okay, 16 plus four is 20. And then we just drop the two X. And then we're going to divide by that coefficient of x, which is 2, cancels it out. We get x equals 10. So we've translated and solved. Okay, cool. Last time I didn't do the uh, checklist here. 15 more than n is at least, I think there's a t here, I probably cut off, um, is at least 48. So 15 more than n, that's this, is at least 48. At least, that means it's greater than or equal to 48. That's what the at least 48 part means there. At least 48. Okay, I'm going to box that because that's my first part. Solving it. Okay, cool. We just want to get rid of that number on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. I get n is greater than or equal to 33. And that one is solved. Cool. I don't have to graph it. Yay. Okay. Samuel paid 2582 for gas this week. Ooh, not a gas guzzler, is he? So, uh, which was 347 less than he paid last week. How much had he paid last week? Ooh. ooh. Okay. He paid last week. I I'm just going to label that as X. U usually I go through a whole checklist of things to label X, but I'm just going to do X for that. Samuel paid 2582 for gas this week, 347 less. So 25, oops, 82. I got a little crazy with the decimal. Um, that's part of the five now. 2582 is 347 less than what he paid last week. This is, I'm going to underline in orange, 347 less than what he paid last week in orange. It's that orange. So you know the drill. It's like, oh, I want to solve, I want to isolate X. I want to get rid of this negative 347 or minus 347. How do you do that? You add 3.47 to both sides. Okay, cool. And if you don't know it, you'll catch on. Don't worry. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Helio Gracie learned a lot of jujitsu just by watching. So you could learn a lot of math just by watching too. Um, so 2582 plus 3.47. We're just going to line everything up. 2 plus 7 is 9. 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 3 is 9. And then the 2. And then probably want to make sure we label it in dollars because it is a word problem. I always check, oh, am I labeling everything correctly? So how much had he paid last week? 29.29. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, uh, if my computer still works. Okay, good, good. Um, Jenna bought a coat on sale for $120, which is two thirds of the original price. Ooh, that's going to be X. Um, what was the original price of the coat? So 120 was or is, that's an equal sign two-thirds of the original price. Okay, so 120 is two-thirds X. Solving that, okay, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll do it the official way. See this two-thirds, let's flip it. That means we're going to multiply by three halves both sides. And then, so this cancels this. That's cool. We're left with X on the right-hand side. Um, you can think of three halves times 120 is three halves times 120 over one. When you multiply fractions, you can just go straight across. So I'm just going to do it in slow-mo, just so you know. If you already know the answer, just go ahead and skip the next problem. Totally cool. Skip forward about 40 seconds. A um, couple things we can do here. We can do cross-canceling. So 2 into 120 goes 60 times, and that's just a 1. So we could do 3 times 60 over 60 is with the 0, Martin. Okay, 1 times 1 on the bottom equals x. Um, 3 times 60 is 180. Uh, putting a 1 to the denominator is just redundant or unnecessary. So you get 180 equals X. Ooh, $180. Okay, good, good, good. Good, good, good. Okay, Sean, taking the bus. 
taking the bus. So he's not paying for gas. Well, not directly. Um, took the bus from Seattle to Boise, a distance of 506 miles. The trip took seven and two thirds hours. What was the speed of the bus? So this is one of those like DRT problems. I just call it DRT. There's another way to do this too. I don't want to introduce it quite yet. Um, but distance equals rate times time. Speed is the same thing as rate. So that's what we're trying to solve for. So instead of multiplying by t, we just divide both sides by t. So we get d over t equals rate. Or, you know, to be fancy, we can call it speed. And then, so distance, well, it's five. Well, I'll, I actually substitute. 506 is going to go up top. That's going to be my distance. 506 miles over seven and two. Th I'm writing one third, seven, two thirds hours. Man, self sabotage. Okay, equals speed. So the trick is we want to do this. And if you have a calculator, just do it and just like the video and say goodbye. But if we have seven two thirds hours and you have to do this all by hand, I, I would convert seven and two thirds like, okay, seven um, and two thirds is going to be like seven times three plus two all over three. And I'll show you where the numbers are coming from. This three goes on the bottom. It's also what you're multiplying by. The seven's here. That's where I'm getting that from. And then the two... That's what's going the plus two part. Just so you see, see, because I don't go like blah, 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 blah. Like most math teachers, it's like, hey, just color code it. I think everybody's cool with that. Unless you're colorblind, in which case, man, you're just really disliking my math videos. I'm so sorry. Um, seven times three is 21. 21 plus two over three. 21 plus two is 23. So it's 23 over three. So we can rewrite this. And I'm sorry, I'm looking like a football play here. 506 divided by 23 over 3. Okay, here's the funky monkey thing I'm going to do. Dividing by 23 thirds is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's like 506 over 1 times 3 over 23. I know. You thought this couldn't get any crazier. Now now you really wish you had a calculator. But we're going to do uh, 3 times 506, which is 1518, all divided by 23. Now, you could do it by hand, and I'm sure you know how to do long division by now because I've done it a few times. But I am going to break down and use a calculator here. Um, oh my gosh, that's 66. So it's 66. And we do want to label units, miles over hour, something like that. Or if you do my per HR or MPH like they do in the States, um, I think you're, you're cool with that. Okay, I hope this helped. Oh, uh, we're going to continue with these algebra one chapter tests and, you know, just keep on knocking it out the park on these videos. Uh, if you have any suggestions about topics you'd like me to cover or different ways I do it, um, please comment. I will read it and respond because I'm not the size of Mr. Beast yet. Okay, <laughs> take care and have a good day.